Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here with me. Before I start, as always, I would like to remind you to join me on Locals, join my mailing list. And um, if you want to support me, the best way to do it is through Locals on Patreon as well, where I put more spiritual, esoteric um, videos and by buying my books that will mean a lot which is for children right here about two time travelers the links will be down below and my life story right here 44 becoming self anyway let's jump into what i have for you today and that is how many topics i have i think three topics so let's start with um information that i came across on souverain.pl it's a polish youtube channel the link will be down below this video you can watch that um, in polish and he highlighted a very interesting fact that i would like to bring to your attention so poland is apparently number one and in what poland is number one well let's read this the production of diesel oil in polish refineries has been the largest in years in months of between January and July this year, 2022, it increased by 14% to 8.2 million tons. Due to the possibility of relatively stable meeting of domestic demand despite the crisis, Poland increased its diesel exports to Ukraine, becoming the largest trade partner in this sector. In the months of January, Till July this year, Poland supplied over 430,000 tons of diesel fuel to Ukraine, twice as much as the second country, Bulgaria. The total exports of Polish uh, refineries in the period January September was the highest in history 554,000 tons, which is 40% higher than in the previous year and accounted to 50% of EU diesel exports to Ukraine. Mind you, the prices for the diesel oil in Poland are in comparison to the salaries of the citizens in European Union are the highest. So there you have it, there you have it. Crazy, no? very 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 unfair i mean what's new right and then another thing i have for you guys is you remember the nuclear power plant story so i have some update on this i came across this information that the government is considering introducing a new tax on the construction of a nuclear plant you know in poland the one that will um, be made here, collaboration with United States and US company. This would be a fee of few zlotys added to our electricity bill. This is an idea that four years ago was considered in then Ministry of Energy. For the time being, the system of financing the power plant has not been specified. All that is known is that government wants Americans to enter into Polish atom with this capital. For example, they can buy a 49% stake, stake in the new power plant, but how to find, finance the remaining 51%? For example, loans. The problem is that the current level of interest rates, with the current level of interest rates, this would be a gigantic cost. That's why the government came up with this idea of returning to the so-called nuclear fee. If it amounted to 10 zloty per month, which is about 2.5 US dollars, let's say approximately, to each bill, then annually the state would collect 2 billion zloty. The cost of building a nuclear power plant is, as the Prime Minister Morawiecki, admitted on Wednesday, 100 billion zloty. So there you have it. That's how you generate 
the money, 51%, to create that power plant in Poland. And now, the last thing I want to talk to you about is something that um, is related not only to Poland, but because I am Polish, it is something very important to me because as many of you know, six million Poles has lost their lives during the World War II due to the N-word. I have to be careful and I will be saying N-word, which is, you know, Adolf, the painter from Austria, okay? You know what I'm talking about. It's very um, sensitive, this algorithm on YouTube. So N-A and you know, ends with Z-I, Germany, okay? So what happened is, when was it? On the 3rd of November um, in New York, right? United Nations, there was voting taking place. And I think many of you know this. Um, I haven't been watching latest videos of some of the channels I normally watch. So maybe they were reporting on this, but if they haven't, or maybe if you haven't watched, there you have it here. Um, that vote was taking place in UN um, November 3rd. And I came across this letter, and then I will tell you who was participating in this as far as voting um, against it. EU explanation of vote, UN General Assembly, draft resolution on combi combating glorification of N-A-Z-I-N word. So actually November 4th, um, explanation of vote was by the European Union at the 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly after the vote on the draft resolution combining glorification of N-word, neo-N-word, and other places that contribute to fueling contemporary forms of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance. And this letter says, let me see, it's from European Union, I believe. Mr. Chair, I have the honor to speak on behalf of the European Union. The candidate country Ukraine aligns itself with this statement. For many European countries, the end of the Second World War did not bring freedom, but further occupation and more repression, and in some cases, even crimes against humanity by other totalitarian regimes. Indeed, the most devastating parts of Europe's history have been the result of totalitarian ideologies, including n -word. Today, under the false pretense of fighting and word, sorry guys, I have to do it. Russia has brought the horrors of war back to Europe, along with reminder that peace cannot be taken for granted. I read it again. Today, under the false pretense of fighting and word, Russia has brought the horrors of war back to Europe, along with the reminder that peace cannot be taken for granted. We strongly condemn the abuse of the argument of the fight against N-word and reject the inaccurate and in inappropriate use of the term denazification by Russia to justify its inhumane, cruel, and illegal war of aggression against Ukraine, the continued impacts of which are dire, not only for the people of Ukraine, but for the people around the world. Such distortion erodes our understanding of Holocaust, disrespects its legacy, and undermines democratic principles. With regards to the resolution in front of us today, the European Union has pleaded for years that the fight against extremist, extremism and the condemnation of the despicable ideology of N-word must, be mis must not be misused and co-opted for politically motivated purposes that seek to excuse new, val new variations and abuses of human rights. We would like to stress again that the tragic past of the Second World War should continue to serve as a moral and political inspiration to face the challenges of today's world. The European Union is unequivocally in its commitment to the global 
fight against racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, antisemitism, and related intolerance. Our joint fight against contemporary forms of all extremists and totalitarian ideologies, including neo and world, must be a joint priority for the whole international community. Da, 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 da. Thank you, Chair. So the countries were voting around how many countries? Um, 190 or so. Absolutely dominant number of those countries voted that they don't have, they don't want that N-word, okay? They don't want it. And now the countries actually written down pretty much all of them, most of them, who were against combi combating glorification of N-word, neo N-word and other practices that contribute to fueling contemporary forms of racism, rational discrimination, xenophobia, and related intolerance. I know this is long, but this is important. So here are the countries that voted against this. I read it, they voted for it. That's how I see it. I mean, make it simple. And let's start with the country that lost 6 million citizens because of the N, Germany, Poland, United States, United Kingdom, Greece, France, Sweden, Finland, of course, Ukraine, Portugal, Republic of Moldova, Austria, Australia, Canada, Belgium, Estonia, Bulgaria, Spain, Slovakia, Malta, Germany, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Ireland, Italy, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Croatia. There are a few more, but th those are the countries. You know, and sometimes I know uh, people think, where shall we live now? What place is the best to live? Where shall we move? And I look at the countries that were voting, how they were voting, because all of those to me look like they are for it. Is this the place to, to live? I mean, listen, I'm, I'm just saying my opinion here. You are very welcome to leave comments down below. I'm very sorry for saying this N word the way I was saying it because it's it's frustrating for me too with the YouTube, but it is what it is. Um, I will attach the link to this letter down below the video. Thank you for watching guys. Stay tuned for more videos coming. Make sure to check your um, subscription if you're still subscribed to the channel because sometimes it's unsubscribed without your knowledge. And yeah, also type in comments, please make sure that you don't abuse the N words or kind of go around it. Thank you so much for watching and for all the support. And I will see you very soon. Lots of love everyone.